The normal function of the lungs is gas exchange and pH balance. So when you inspire, your diaphragm flattens and your intercostal muscles cause the ribs to go out and up. And because of this, the pressure changes in the thoracic cavity. And because of this pressure change, the oxygen will then rush into your lungs. Now when you expire, the diaphragm then relaxes and the intercostal muscles cause the ribs to go in and down. And this changes the pressure again in the thoracic cavity, causing carbon dioxide to leave the lungs. So gas enters and exits the bloodstream using simple diffusion. Um, and due to the pressure, the carbon dioxide will leave the bloodstream and enter the lungs and out of the lungs. And then um, because of the pressure as well, the oxygen will enter the alveoli and into the bloodstream. Respiratory acidosis, which is a body pH of below 7.35, develops as a result of inadequate ventilation, which occurs in severe cases of pneumonia. Carbon dioxide accumulates in the body, which decreases the amount of bicarbonate in the plasma, causing an increase in the level of carbonic acid and hydrogen ions, which lower pH. The symptoms of respiratory acidosis include decreased CNS function, drowsiness, disorientation, stupor, cyanosis, and labored breathing. I'm not feeling so good. I, I feel really warm. Oh, are you okay? I don't know. This girl is on fire! As the body is working towards fighting this infection, the body reacts by increasing temperature, causing a fever in the individual with bacterial pneumonia. Generally, fever is a systemic and adaptive way that the body reacts to invasive microorganisms. Pyrogens are released by the leukocytes and macrophages when they are exposed to foreign substances within the body. The fever causes organs, such as the spleen and liver, to prevent further bacteria growth. As bacterial microorganisms invade the lung during bacterial pneumonia, the body quickly reacts by releasing pyrogens, which then increases the body's temperature to prevent further bacterial growth in the lungs. <laughs> <coughs> oh, that doesn't look so good. That looks like Klebsiella bacterial pneumonia. What's that? Klebsiella is a type of bacterial pneumonia. The reason why Kazaya was able to identify Jenny's pneumonia as Klebsiella is because pneumonia is diagnosed by its sputum color, texture, and smell. Different qualities in the sputum is caused by different types of bacteria growing in the lungs. Klebsiella presents with a red currant jelly colored sputum, and the bacteria is then classified into gram negative and gram positive bacteria, which can help determine treatment and also point to how the person got pneumonia. As Jenny has Klebsiella pneumonia, she probably got it from aspiration, and it is a gram negative bacteria, which is harder to treat. Neutrophils migrate and form large clusters of infection attacking defense mechanisms in areas where signals of infection are present within the bloodstream. These neutrophils become macrophages as they exit the capillary wall and flow into lung airspace. The macrophages use antimicrobial proteins and enzymes to phagocytize foreign microbes to prevent further microbes from developing. Neutrophils also develop a neutrophil extracellular trap that is a chromatin, meshwork, and antimicrobial protein-based mechanism. This mechanism allows neutrophils to trap extracellular bacteria and hinders the bacteria's ability to continue moving through extracellular fluid and into the intracellular fluid. Oh man, I'm, oh, I'm tired. You don't look so good. I know, I think I'm just gonna fall asleep. I'm feeling really sleepy. Boys and girls, hypoxia is no laughing matter. As a matter of fact, it looks like our friend Jenny here is going through red hepatization part of bacterial pneumonia. This means that she is having shallow breathing as you can see. Yep, and this is caused by your cells looking like liver cells and acting like liver cells. What it does is it creates um, lack of elasticity in your alveoli causing Jenny right here which makes it hard for her to breathe. So this makes it so that oxygen can't get through because they're fluid filled. The next thing that Jenny said here is, oh, she's quite sleepy, so she's got fatigue. This is because oxygen can't pass through her alveoli quite as easily as it used to be able to because it's fluid-filled. 
we've got a snoring Cinderella over here. And what happens is that it makes it so that the oxygen cannot get to your cells and create ATP with glucose, thus causing the fatigue. In summary, all of our symptoms show how pneumonia affects our three key concepts. Now, fatigue shows the disruption of homeostasis by not allowing oxygen to pass through as easily, thus creating less ATP, thus causing the fatigue. It also affects the cell membrane in the way that because the alveoli are fluid filled, the oxygen can no longer simple diffuse through the cell membrane of the alveoli. A fever is our next symptom, and this is affected by the pyrogen proteins, which is what causes the fever itself, which are released by macrophages and leukocytes that are trying to kill off the bacteria.